Welcome once again to uh, Swinger.com, our training program. Again, my name is David Banks. And today, being that we still live in Canada, especially Southern Ontario, uh, it's been the mildest winter we've had in a long time, but it's still too cold to play golf. So what we want to talk about today, as I alluded to last week, is we're going to talk about some training exercises, some things you can do in the off season to improve your golf during the season. Now, golf is a sport. For too long, it was considered to be just like a recreational activity, but it truly is a sport. When done properly, uh, when it comes to our full swing, it's a very ballistic, uh, explosive movement, and you virtually activate every muscle in the body, uh, especially the largest ones, to create this relationship. So, as with every other sporting endeavor, determined by their off season. The better work you do in the off season, the better your season becomes. Being in this area, but anywhere for that matter, if we do some work on our off-season relationships. Uh, it's the best time to work on things because the big match coming up on the weekend or the club championship three weeks away because that becomes a bit of a mental block for us to try to make changes because our bodies become accustomed to doing a certain things in a certain way and we've created movement patterns and in simplest terms we've educated the muscles. Sometimes the muscles though, albeit educated, they don't know what they're supposed to know. So we sometimes have to retrain the muscle and retraining is sometimes even more difficult from a time perspective than training. So what we're gonna to try to do is give you a couple little thoughts about things that you can do to really improve your muscular education, neuromuscular education in the off season. So first, I would begin with saying, if you have ever had someone look at your golf swing, uh, specifically your grip, or if you've got the swing at your trainer and you have the grip attachment. If you put your hands on there and it doesn't quite feel right, this would be a great time to make sure that you become more and more accustomed to having your hands on that golf club in a manner that suits the physiological demand of golf on our hands and the physiological design of our hands to hold the golf club. So spend some time, as much as you possibly can, the more repetitions the better, of getting your hands comfortable in that golf club. So that's one that would be absolutely, absolutely advantageous for your golf if you have a grip challenge. Now, Something else we can do that doesn't require you know, an environment like this where you can hit golf balls or whatever, we're trying to train the muscles. So one of the things you can do, very simple, for the guys out there, you might, your wife might love seeing you pick up the broom, but she'll soon realize you're not doing any sweeping at all. We can actually use a very simple item like this at home to help us learn to do a couple real simple things. Um, if we happen to say to ourselves, I want to work on my golf game in the off season, we should look at or ask ourselves, what's the problem that I have in my golf game? Because golf is a very multifaceted activity. There's your full swing when it comes to your woods or your driver and your irons. We have a short game, you know, pitching the ball, chipping the ball. We have a putting element to golf. There's also, you know, how well do I manage my game around the golf course? Well, we're gonna to start today by talking about one thing you can do to work on your chipping and pitching, but it can also translate into doing a real good job in your full swing as far as how to strike the golf ball. So. You take a, ver a very simple, ordinary, standard corn broom. You can see I've done a little bit of a modification where I've shaped or cut off the one side of it to give it a little bit more of a golf relevant angle. And you're gonna grip it kind of maybe halfway or a little bit above halfway down. And when you do, what you're gonna do is what I call um, a little drag drill to help us understand the feeling of creating pressure on what would be the golf ball which is what makes the golf ball move, is putting pressure into it. And you're gonna to learn to stabilize and flatten the left wrist, and you're gonna learn to maintain the angular relationship of the right wrist, assuming we're talking about right-handed golfers. For those that are left-handed, obviously the reverse. And the drill is quite simple. You simply take the broom, you hold it in your golf grip relationship, take your setup, and now you're gonna have a simple little exercise where you're gonna simply let your body turn and you're gonna swing the broom. And what you're gonna to try to get a sense of is the broom handle will be at your side and you're in your golf posture, so I'm kind of holding about middle. And now, when I just gently swing this back, the broom should stay relatively cl close to your side. When we make what would be considered an impact, because the broom's gonna brush the ground, that's gonna help us create this descending blow, and you're gonna see a very flat left wrist, and there's a definite angle to my right. And the motion just looks like this, to impact, and now through. And we're just trying to get a feeling for the body and the arms working collectively together, and this will really help you learn to feel the synchronization of your arms and your body. Very simple drill. We then can expand that drill to what I refer to, as very often referred to, as a drag and release drill. 
same implement. We're going to grip it a little longer now. Again, take your setup. You're going to hold that broom back a little bit. And now you're going to simply feel the sensation of your arms and your body connected. And you're going to rotate the body and that will drag the broom along the ground. And I'm creating real pressure on the, the broom itself. The, you know, the corn silk on there is being pressured. And now you're going to simply release the broom to halfway through to your finish. So it's just drag and release. And this is a great little exercise to feel the pressure. I can feel my weight rotating left because of the body rotation. I can feel the pressure in my hands of the, the flexing of the broom itself. And now release, all of a sudden that pressure is eliminated or removed, or in simplest terms, it is released into what would be the golf ball. So a great little drill to help us understand the body arm synchronization and the releasing of what ultimately will be the club head. Great exercise, lots of repetitions. I guess if you wanted to, you could actually walk around the garage and do this in different places and sweep up the garage. Final great little exercise for the winter. We all should own one of these. Swingature, great, up, great tool to help us do a lot of things. And this is an application for this that is very, you know, very effectively done inside. Again, no golf balls required. We're going to learn to help our body move better by making sure the body has the proper plan. Our brain tells our body what to do. And if our brain unfortunately has the wrong idea or the wrong concept, as I mentioned in a past blog, the body will try to the best of its ability to accomplish that directive, that agenda, that plan. If it's the wrong plan, the best we can do is a good job of something that's wrong and that won't get us a good result. So what unfortunately happens in golf is because the golf ball is in front of us and we stand, for lack of a better term, kind of beside the golf ball, there's a lot of things that that relationship kind of promotes. If I was to turn and give you a downline view, with the golf ball being here, part of what it does, it challenges my directional relationships because I'm actually trying to shoot the gun like this. That's not so easy. So that becomes a challenge in golf. The golf ball again is out here, so the tendency that people have when they swing the golf club is to move in the direction of the golf ball because their brain thinks my job, unfortunately instinctively, is to take the club head on the end of the stick and strike that thing on the ground and maybe lift that thing up in the air and you know hit it really hard and try to kill it. And all those things are counterproductive, but your body will try to achieve those things if that's what your brain is telling it to do. We have to keep in mind that golf isn't about this. Golf is about that. It's about our target. Our objective is to make the ball hit the target. It's no different than a child learning to throw a ball. His objective isn't letting go of the ball. His objective is hitting the glove. So the drill is really simple. Take your swingature. I've got the weight in, so we're going to go kind of slow at first. Take your setup. You're going to simply turn your head and look at where you want the ball to go. Now, granted, I'm inside, so let's pick a spot on the wall. And here I could pick a spot on the net. And all I'm going to do is maintain my focus and my vision. My vision is what I'm looking at. My focus is what's in my brain, the thought relationship. I'm thinking about that. And because I'm thinking about it and looking at it, now my body is getting the directive to say, that's what matters to this guy. So now, from here, we're going to go ahead and simply swing back. We're going to reduce the amount of ro rotation of our body simply because our neck is turned to the left. But don't worry about the reduction of the backswing. Simply think to yourself about how would I make my hands and arms and body move to accommodate that objective. And it will look something like this. And now your body will learn very rapidly to sequence forward. We will get rid of some really challenging things that we see for people that have to learn to try to change habits. We see lateral motion. We see up and down movements, you know, early extension of the spine. We see these over the top pitches. We see these casting relationships. These will all be greatly reduced or even removed from the sequence because now our body is trying to accommodate a better plan. That's my objective. So again, you look, let yourself turn back, and then through. Take it comfortable, take it casual, because you've got the weight in. If you then step it up, remove the internal weight, and now we're light, so we're gonna go fast, and now we create the exact same environment. I get set up, now I look, I focus, and I swing towards my focus. But because I've removed the weight, I can go much faster. Those couple of exercises, if we do those little exercises, those drills in the off season, we will see an improved golf relationship in the season. 
work on that. We'll talk to you soon.